Hello everyone, and welcome to Introduction to R Part 17, Merging Data. So when you work with data sets, you'll often not have everything you need all in a single file that you can load in. Sometimes the data you want to work with will be spread out across multiple files, and when you work with them, you'll want them all in one data frame so you can use everything all at the same time. So to take data from two different files and join them together into one data frame, you need to merge the data, also known as performing a join. So in this short lesson, we're just going to show how to do that using base R. First, I'm gonna load in some data that we're just generating as a toy example of how to do data merging. So it's just gonna be two tables of fake medical data. It has a patient ID and some other columns. And then there's a second table that also has a patient ID column and then some different uh, some different data variables. So when you're joining or merging data, you need to have some column in common between the two tables so that you know which records are associated with which variables. So in this case above, we can see, for instance, this patient with ID one appears in both tables. So that means even though we don't know the height and weight for this patient, if we only have access to this table or vice versa, we don't know what the visits or checkup is if we only have access to this table. Since we have this patient ID number, we can match this patient in this table to the same patient in the other table and join them together so that we have every single column for that patient in one big table. So we, we want height, weight, and all these other variables all in one table. And to do that, we need this key column to perform the join upon. So that is a very important thing to know when you're doing merging, that you always need some column you're going to join on. You can join on multiple columns if there are multiple columns in common. So we'll also show how to do that. But we'll just start with one. So to perform a uh, merge or join in base R, you use the merge function. The first argument, x, is just the first data frame or table that you want to join. The second argument, y, is set equal to the second table. And then the by argument, you set equal to that key column that you want to use to join on. So in this case, we want to use that patient ID or PID column. So that's what we're going to put for that. And then we'll run this merge and we'll just print it out to see what the resulting table is. But this should take those two tables and merge them successfully on this PID column. So let's see what the result is. <clears throat> so as we can see, we do have data records with all of the columns now. Height, weight, and all these other ones are merged in. But there are a few oddities that we should discuss. As we can see, the patient IDs we don't have all of them anymore. We had, in the first table, we had one through eight. And in this table, we had, we didn't have all the same ones, but we also had nine and 10. So in total, there were 10 patients across both of these data sets. But after we ran this merge, we only have six patients. The reason why some of the patients were dropped from both of the tables is that by default, doing merge will perform what's known as an inner join. So what an inner join does is it takes the first table and the second table, and it finds all of the patient IDs in this case, whatever the key column was, that both of them have in common. And it only keeps records where both tables have that patient ID. So in this case, since the first table did not have patients nine and 10, those are not included here. And it looks like the second table must not have had patient three because that person is not there. And it also they also must not have had patient six because that person isn't here. So four of the patients were dropped as a result of performing this inner join. Now, the good thing about an inner join is that by dropping patients, we're not left with any NA or missing values. Because if we had, say, joined in the patients nine and 10, to this data set, since they didn't exist in the first table, the records for height and weight, for instance, which were only available in the first table would be empty because we didn't know what those were for patients nine and 10. 
So by performing inner join, it means that you're not going to end up with any empty records, which can be a good thing if you don't want to have to deal with them. But it also means you may be dropping records, and in some cases, that's not what you want to be doing. So we'll also show how to perform other types of joins that will keep those records. So a second type of join is a left join. What that will do is it'll take the first table you pass in and keep every single record for the key column that you choose. So in this case, doing a left join, it will keep all the patients in the first table, and then it will look in the second table, and any ones that match will also be, the data from those will also be joined in. <clears throat> so in this case, the patients nine and 10 will not be coming in from this join because those aren't in table one and they won't match, but all the one through eight, patients one through eight will remain and any data that is in the second table that can be matched in will be. This will result in some missing values, but let's just run the join and see what it looks like. Again, we pass in table one, table two, we pass in the column, but to do the left join, we set this new argument to all.x equals true, which just means we want to keep all the key values in x this time instead of doing the inner join. So let's perform the left join. As we can see, like we thought, patients one through eight are all here, except the ones that were missing in the second column, we can't fill in data values for these variables. So these are all filled in as NA because they didn't exist in the second table. But at least we didn't drop any people from the first table. And in many cases, we might not want to drop people even if these are gonna be empty. And you can do also what's known as a right join. It's just kind of the converse operation to the left join. So what the right join does is it keeps all of the patient IDs in this case in the second column or the second table that you pass in. So this right join, we're passing in the first table again, the second table, same key column, but instead of doing all.x equals true, we're saying all.y equals true, which means we wanna keep all of the patients in the second table and patients that are not in the second table will be dropped. So let's do that and see what the result is. <clears throat> so we can see patients nine and 10 are here now because they are in the second table, but the records for height and weight cannot be joined in because the first table didn't have height and weight records for patients nine and 10 because they weren't in there at all. And then patients three and six are also not here because we said we only want all that y equals true means we only want values for the patient ID that were in the second table and those did not exist in the second table. Now, if we want to keep all the patients from both tables, you can do what's known as an outer join. So that will take both tables, keep every single record in the patient ID column, but it's going to introduce missing values in different places because some of the patient IDs were missing in table one, some of them were missing in table two. So if we join everything, in, but we keep all of them, there's going to be missing values in, in all of the different columns. So to do the outer join, you just do the same thing, table one, table two, same column, but in this case, we're saying all equals true. So we want both everything in X and everything in Y and we'll do this and there should be a decent bit of missing values but all of the patient ids will be there so we can see every single patient is here now patient one through ten there's just going to be some missing values for the rec the columns where we didn't know where there was no entries for these now earlier i alluded to the fact that it is possible to do a merge or a join on more than one key column and you can see in this outer join result here, we actually have two columns, one from each of the tables that tell us the same thing, they have, even though they're called something different. And you can see here, we have a gender column. And in the other table, we had a sex column, but it's, it seems that they're showing us the exact same data. You see male and female, we do have some missing values, but these are essentially telling us the same thing. So when we performed our merge, we, we don't really need to double up on this column. So we could have passed this in as a second column to merge on so that we don't have this duplicating effect here.
Another thing to note is that these columns actually have different names. Before, when we passed in patient ID or PID as the column to merge on, that was given the same name in both the data tables. So we did not have to specify anything further than just that one name because they were the same across both tables. In this case, if we want to also merge on these two columns, we're going to have to specify the names of each one in each table because gender and sex are not the same word. So it won't know what to join on unless we explicitly say in the first data table, we want to merge on that column, and the second one, we want to merge on this column. So I'll show how to do that below. So we're gonna do a final merge here. Again, they're the same tables, but this time we have to explicitly say which columns in each table we want to merge on. So by.x means in the x table or the first table, we want to merge first on the PID. Again, that's the same, but we also want to secondarily merge on the gender column. And for the y, by.y, we also want to merge first on the PID again. But for the second, we want to merge on the sex column because it's given a different name. And again, in this case, we're going to run all equals true. So this will just be another outer join. But it should also join on the second column and remove that duplication of the column. So let's run that and see what the result is. As you can see now, we just have a gender column and the sex column has been removed because we joined in on that second column, which allowed us to remove that. And we also now don't have any missing values in that column because they were joined together. So that's about all there is to say about doing basic data merging or joining in base R. Now, I will say it is possible to do joins in the dplyr package. The dplyr package is a data manipulation library that has a lot of functions for doing data manipulations, particularly joins and summarization. So it has functions called things like left join, a right join function, and things like that. So if you want to use the dplyr library, you can use that to do joins, but the base R merge function can get the job done as well. In the next lesson, we're going to go into frequency tables, which are a useful tool for exploring categorical variables. See you next time.